Hi, I'm Bill Keeter. Welcome to this brief presentation about importing a functional hierarchy into availability workbench. We're going to talk about conditioning the hierarchy for input, setting up the import in the availability workbench software, and then converting the RCM locations that we put into the software into a reliability lock diagram. First thing that's important is to remember that the parents get on the bus first. We have to import the parent locations before we import the child locations. So what we're going to do is show you how to set that up and we'll put in the three columns of data that we need in order to do the basic diagram. We'll put in the functional location ID, the parent ID derived from those functional location IDs, and the description of the functional location. Now this is the minimum amount of data you might want to put in. You can also have data about whatever other fields you want as long as they match up with the correct field in the RCM locations table. Once we prepare the data, then we can import it into the software. Fairly straightforward function. We just take the import facility, pick the file type, match the file tabs up to the tables in Availability Workbench, and then match the import file fields to the desired Availability Workbench fields. Once we've done that, then we can take that functional location hierarchy that we've imported into RCM locations and convert that hierarchy to an RBD. Now, the RBD won't be perfect because it doesn't put in the serial and redundant relationships that we might want. So we'll need to go through that diagram, make sure that we capture those redundant locations that we have, and picture that redundancy in availability work. The first step for applying data for import to the availability workbench is to get the functional hierarchy set up properly. Uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have it sorted in the correct sort order so that all of the parents are in the hierarchy before the children of that parent. And that's what we've done here in column C. So you've probably seen a spreadsheet before that's maybe got the functional location and the description. All we did here was copy it over and make sure it was in the right order. And then for creating the parents, obviously the plant, the parent for the plant is the system because the system is the baseline system that's in Availability Workbench. That'll become obvious in, once we get over into that software. And then for each part of the hierarchy below the plant, so this is an area in the plant, area six. The parent for area six is the plant. And then we've got area six electrical, and the parent for that is electrical. Now, what we're able to do usually, if these are set up right, is to write a function that we can put over here in the column next to it to create the parent column. Because when we import into the software, we're going to be importing the functional location ID, which is here called functional location to import. We're going to be importing the parent IDs because those functional locations are tied to individual parents. And you will see how important that is once we try the import. And then we're going to want to import the description. So you could insert a column in between A and B and do the same sort of function. I just chose to do it this way because I didn't want to mess with the baseline data. So once we get this set up, then we can set up the software to import the file. Now that we have the Excel file set up, we can import the data into Availability Workbench. First, we'll select the RCM cost module from the menu. Then we'll go to the file menu, select and select import. And when it comes up, we'll select the Excel file type as the thing we're importing from. We'll make sure to check that the column names are in the first row of the data. And we also want to have it replace matching and append any non-matching records so that every record gets put in. Then we can browse to the file. In this case, we have it on the desktop for easy access. 
and we'll double click on this file to get it open. Once we have the file open, we'll get the message connect to database succeeded. If you don't get that message, then you're going to have to go back and do some troubleshooting to figure out why that hasn't worked. So now that we've selected the file, we'll go match up our tables. The table we're using in this case is the functional location or flop table. We come down here and select the RCM locations table. That's this table right here. We click on flock and we click on RCM locations and that sets up the table and then we match the correct columns. So we're using the functional location to import as the functional location ID. We match that to ID. We match the description to description and we match parent to parent. So we select parent and parent. And once you match those up, you'll see that it shows the relationship. So we've got description to description, functional location to ID, and parent to parent. Next thing you do is just select import and do the import. And you'll get a message import complete at the end. That usually means that the import completed, not only that, it imported with no errors. So let's go look at our functional location hierarchy once we close this. Now, if you want to, you could save this import for doing the same thing later. So if you have multiple places where you want to do this functional location import, you give this a name by selecting yes and tell it import functional locations. That way, the next time you decide to do this import, you can pull up that import, select a named import by selecting open, and you'll have the name right there in order to be able to just automatically import that. So if you make changes to the functional location table that you used, you can, it will just automatically do it. You just pull up the automatic Pull up the named import, select import, and it'll make the changes you need to make. So if you add some locations or do some other things like that, uh, you can automatically do that import just with a couple of button pushes. Very, very useful. So now let's look at our location and locational hierarchy. So the system has pulled all those locations in. And here we see plant area 06. And then all of the subparts of 06. So these are all parents to other parts. So we've got the cryogenics, distillation, hydrogenation, phenol treatment, all these different areas that got pulled in. And in each one of those areas, all of the functional location parents below it. And finally, the bottom location where you might want to do your RCM analysis. So here you can put in your additional data, put in your functions and your functional failures and your faults or causes or seeing causes below those bottom locations. So you're all set up for doing RCM on any portion of this particular plan. Now, you also have the capability of converting this to a reliability block diagram. Very simple process. You just select tools, select convert, locations to RBD. And voila, we have a reliability block diagram all set for us to work on. So we've got our different sections within the area. We've got our systems and subsystems all the way down to the bottom level of the reliability block diagram. Now, the only thing that hasn't been caught is redundant relationships. You may have to go back and fix those and put those redundancies in there. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to make sure is that all of the connections were created properly. So make sure you've got these arrows in place.
and that covers importing data into the RCM locations and converting those locations into a reliability block diagram for further analysis. In this presentation, we talked about preparing your data for input, importing the data to the RCM locations table and availability workbench, and converting the RCM locations to a reliability block diagram. If you would like to have more information about availability workbench and other analysis tools that are available, please contact Brett Peterson at isograph.com. Thank you for attending this presentation.